Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're getting our first impressions of a brand new album from Bloody Hammers titled The Summoning. Bloody Hammers is one of those bands that's very new to both of us. They've been around for, for a bit. They have a few albums under their belt, but this is one of those things where I was just on YouTube one day and I see this thumbnail and it catches my attention, attention and I'm just like, hmm, what's that? So I click on it and it's their single, let the, let, what is it? Let the Sleeping Corpses Lie, that's it. Let the Sleeping Corpses Lie. So the song plays and I was like, whoa, I dig this. Sent him the link, he dig it too. You know, yeah, you know, not as much as I was kind of drooling over it, but yeah. then I checked out one of the older albums of theirs, and I'm, you know, I was getting into it a lot more, thinking like, wow, these guys are really cool. And then I yeah. checked out Let the Sleeping Cor Corpses Lie again, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, this is pretty neat. Yeah, I checked out a bunch of their older stuff as well, and it was kind of hit and miss for me, to be honest. There was a lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff that I was kind of like, man, whatever. But um, this is kind of like... It's, a, it's the lighter side of metal. This is kind of Black Sabbath-y, Ghosts type of metal, you know, clean vocal, but it's still uh, very deep in the, uh, the macabre element, like the as far as the imagery and the lyrics and stuff go. So we're gonna listen to the album for the first time in its entirety right now, and we'll be back in just a moment to give you guys our first impressions of The Summoning. Hey guys, we're back. We just finished listening to The Summoning in its entirety, and I gotta say that on our first impressions, I was very impressed with this album. I thought there was just so much to enjoy about it. There's so much personality to it, and the structure of the album is really, really good. Um, it starts off with the first single they released, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Really love this song. It's what got me into this band. Um, it's just very atmospheric, got cool riffs. It's similar to Ghost um, in its presentation, but the more I listen to this band, the less I hear that Ghost element. So I don't know, maybe I'm just going crazy or something like that, but for some reason that song, I hear Ghost in there, I hear Black Sabbath, which Ghost also reminds me of Black Sabbath, but enough about that. Um, now the Screaming starts as the next song. They also released that as a single, I'm pretty sure, because I do remember hearing it prior to this album. Again, cool melodic grooves, catchy choruses. This album is just loaded with stuff like that. You got some cool synth here and there. The drummer's really busy, doing a lot of cool stuff with his feet. Um, really cool uh, drum rolls. He likes to play on the floor toms and really deep sounding. I love that. Um, it, it just, it, it takes you a bit on a, on a roller coaster right in the middle of the album. Uh, and I'm gonna let you take over in a second here because this is a song that you said you liked. Uh, the Beast is Coming Out, track number five, right in the middle of the album. This is a part of the album where it really like slows down, mellows out, kind of gives you a little bit of a break from the action. Um, that was a low part of the album for me as far as scoring my songs go, only because it just seemed a little um, boring. There wasn't much happening, but I do appreciate the placement of the song. And it's one of those things where you know, they, they put it in the middle of the album for a reason because you got a lot of energy at the beginning, uh, you got all that energy at the end, and that song is the break point, right? Which a lot of albums we notice have. So I think that was very conveniently put there. But I, I think the first half of the album is super strong. The second half of the album is super strong. That's just right in the middle. But um, yeah, if you want to just take over uh, with that, because you said The Beast is Coming Out was one of your highest rated songs. Yeah, honestly, like, this whole album had a very consistent rating for me in terms of song by song. Like, it was, all the songs are really close to each other in terms of the rating, and they were overall good. Like, none of these songs are bad. Yep. If I were to say what my least favorite song is, it would probably be track number six, Welcome to Darkness. While it's catchy like everything else, I'm not sure if I really love it. That's something that's gonna have to stand the test of time to see if it's gonna grow on me or not. But mm. everything else I enjoyed off the first listen, but that one, I wasn't so sure. But the comments on The Beast is coming out, I really like how this is a really calm song, a very open song, but it's also hard. It's gonna dig into you at the same time. I think that's such a great blend of just opposite ends of the spectrum for energy and lack of energy. And um, there is some kind of synth sounds which were also present in um, The Summoning, which is the title track. You know, it yeah. starts with this cool like synth. I honestly thought a synth wave song was coming on. Like yeah. it was one of those compilations, like something like that was coming. But uh, so, and that's a relevant thing throughout the entire album. Like you'll see a lot of cool 70s 
sound effects from synthesizers from keyboards. During the second verse of the piece is coming out though, this piano line started and I loved it. I loved how you had the first verse and then you built upon it. Mm -hmm. And I loved how consistent that piano became and it just added. Like it was like another spice thrown in there. Yeah. Into the into the food and it tasted really good. Yeah, one thing I want to mention too is the beast is coming out is a, a slower, much more mellowy kind of song, but it's not the only song like that. Track number eight, Condemned, The Prisoner, is also um, a lot less energetic, but I love this song because it had so much raw emotion in it. The singer, don't know his name, but I love this guy's voice. He's got a, a pretty unique voice and he's just belting it out in this song. Like he just sounded much more invested in this song emotionally than all the other tracks. And I got a lot of like, you get a little bit of like old country western type of vibes or maybe like Johnny Cash Hurt, you know, which is a super popular song. Um, I was getting vibes like that for this song and you can definitely hear the anguish in his voice because he's singing as the prisoner, prisoner and he's condemned, right? And you listen to the lyrics, you just, you feel that emotion. So I really, you know, connected with that song because it just, I don't know, it just had some just power to it. I also think like that song has a really good build up mm -hmm. and then it just breaks everything down and it's, it's a really good kind of dynamic. Right. So it does a good job at kind of telling the story musically yeah. as well with the lyrics and the emotion. I also think this is a really good song for its placement on the album. It's kind of yeah. like the last, you know, dark point. If you think of it of a movie, it's like the second act low point. Yeah. And then everything shoots right back up with tracks nine and ten. Yeah, track nine. I don't know if anybody, any of you guys watching will know this song, Cocaine Cowgirl by uh, Matt Mays and El Torpedo, which is a pretty popular song back in, I think, 2000 maybe 2003 2004 I don't know somewhere around there um, it was it was a song that I you know somebody showed that song to me one day and I was like wow that's actually a really beautiful song and it became one of my kind of classic favorites I throw it on every once in a while and reminisce and go oh yeah this is really cool but track number nine uh, from beyond the grave reminded me a lot of that song and its presentation and its structure and its just overall appeal and sound so it was kind of a cool little throwback for me in my own brain just yeah you know reminiscing like that i mean after we listened like for our first impression before um we started talking he put it on yeah. just like to hear me compare and i can totally see the comparison like yeah. they are similar it's like this one is a bit of a like harder version yeah it's definitely one. definitely like kind of like the, the dig up her bones kind of version you know what i mean like because we're obviously talking about you know a lot of ghoulish things on this album it's that's their whole persona uh, but right after that, you got Unbreakable, which is the last track, which impressed me a lot because it's probably the highest energy track on the album. And I really love when bands go out with the biggest bang. Yep. Because a lot of the times, so nine times out of ten, you'll get bands that have the softest song at the end, or one of the softest songs on the end because they want to close on a nice swan song and just close it out peacefully. Yeah, these guys Not said these no. guys. These guys said nope. They're kicking up the double bass. You got 16th notes on the double bass. You got um, just all kinds of crazy stuff the 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 bridge of the song was awesome totally you got rad drum beats going on um just you know awesome guitar riffing it breaks right back into the chorus again before the end it just had so much powerful energy and just it was fun and awesome honestly i agree like that song was totally awesome and i love how they really went out with a big bang and one note i wrote for this song that i think like stands for the whole album is that the drums are great the drums like are great. Throughout yeah. every single song, I found myself multiple times, oh, the drums are really good here. He did something interesting here. Yep. He's mixing up what he does, but he's also just doing cool things. And this whole album is just full of good, cool, and catchy riffs. Yeah. Yeah, very busy, uh, very creative. Uh, you know, I, I can probably just keep going on with adjectives talking about how cool this album really was. And it's not overly complex either. No, that's another thing, is like it's not extremely technical but it's, it's still busy. And it has depth to it. Yeah, it has depth to it, it's busy. And there's also like, here's another element I'll throw at you guys. There was a few songs, like two in specific. Um, Welcome to Darkness is one of them. And what was the other one? But I can't remember what's the other, oh yeah, The Summoning. Um, very 80s vibe-ish. Yeah, very, especially with the synth. The synth definitely attributed to that, but they definitely sounded like something like circa 1980s, you know? And I was definitely getting that feel from it, which is something that um, A is cool, 
and B, breaks it up from the rest of the album. It doesn't make every song kind of sound the same, even though they got a lot of the same elements. It just keeps everything fresh and gives everything its own personality. So really, really cool stuff. Yeah, honestly, this album just has a lot to it, but it's not a kind of album that you know you'd put on and be like oh I don't know about this there's so much going on there's a lot going on but it's also really accessible and yeah it's really cool yeah so you know what um, as you can see we're both kind of uh, pretty impressed off first impressions but we're gonna have to see if this album stands the test of time because we're gonna listen to it all week long and we'll be back next week with our full and final review of the summoning by bloody hammer so you guys Check this album out, listen to it, let us know in the comments below what you guys think, if you agree with us or not, if you want to know what your favorite tracks are, all that fun stuff. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. We'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Later.